I remember waking up because I could hear Jake running up the stairs in his boots, which is a weird sign of but his face just appeared in front of me like this and he said, Fergie's is on fire, do you want to come say goodbye? By far, my favorite time of the day is brunch. Right in between breakfast and lunch and a glass of mimosa. Today, I'll be bringing you to Fergie's Cafe, an hour drive from downtown Vancouver in the heart of Squamish, where we get to dine in this beautiful architecture, the stunning mountain views, and the serene sound of the Backyard River. Let's go behind the scenes to check out their secret sauce. Fergie's Cafe is located about an hour's drive north of downtown Vancouver in the scenic area of Squamish Valley, known for its stunning wilderness beauty and many outdoor activities. They open for brunch every day from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. and their main clientele are those looking for a fun day trip away from the city, those looking for a truly unique brunch experience, or those staying at the attached Sunwolf Riverside Resort. Thanks for having me, Jess. Hi, this very welcome. This is a beautiful place, definitely a true hidden gem. Mountains, rivers, and a beautiful architect. Tell me the concept behind Fergie's. Well, Fergie's has been here a, a long time um, before us. So uh, Jake and I, that's my husband, we often feel like we are the custodians of a very magical place. And so when we came here, we wanted to sort of bring back some of its former glory, um, which we started with the restaurant, opening the restaurant with just a little blue shack. Right. Um, and just people loving coming here, the walnut tree here, the lawns, the river, the mountains. So I heard there was a flood and it completely burnt down. The restaurant burnt down, yeah, yeah, to and the this ground. this is completely rebuilt. This is the rebuild, yeah. So um, it's been a, a real passion project. Um, but it felt like for the first time, Jake and I could really put stamp our identity on this place a little bit. Everything you see here is designed and is built around around the natural world. So yes. the whole building you can see points straight at Mount Alpha. Yes. And we were very keen with raising it up here that you could now see the river and enjoy the river views. So it was sort of about bringing our own personal design and style to the place whilst at the same time just absolutely almost building a temple to, to just love this environment. There's a particular expression that Jake and I recognize which is the person who came to the old Fergies yes. and they're just sort of like <laughs> you know what really blows me away is not just everything here, but the food. <laughs> like, I was really surprised. I'm like, this is like downtown core five-star quality food. Yes. And you started with a smoker. We, we did, which was, <laughs> it's true. Tell me about the smoker. Well, we gave ourselves the most ridiculously low budget. You're going to be horrified, Wilson, when I tell you what our budget for equipment was. It was $5,000 to kit out a commercial kitchen. And so we were down at an auction and there was a smoker there. We had no intention of buying it. And then the bidding started and you know, they talk so fast and you can barely keep up. And then everything stopped. It was like in slow motion. And Jake and I were like, what's happened? What's happened? Nobody was bidding on the smoker. And I was like, we should just get it. And he's like, no, we, we, didn't, we don't want a smoker. We want the fry punch, we want the this, we want this. And I was like, but nobody's bidding. We're at an auction. In the end, I said, we should do it. And I elbowed him. Jake's hand shot up oh, wow. and, and then there was a moment and then Jake said, I think we just bought a smoker. So we did for 500 bucks. So it was a good investment. And then it just shaped our entire menu. So then we were doing salmon and we um, were doing pork and we do brisket and we smoke our own bacon. We don't, yes. we don't buy this bacon. That's the we... dish I had. Can, can we meet Jake and, and can yes, show us yes. behind the scenes? Absolutely, yeah. Please, let's yeah. go, let's go check him out. Okay. Now, when it comes to the menu, Fergie's Cafe follows this trend set by the building exterior and is definitely not what you would expect from a restaurant out in the middle of the wilderness. Jake and Jess have been able to create an incredible high-end brunch menu based around delicious smoked meats and fresh local ingredients. But while you would expect such a specialty place to have high prices, Fergie's has an average order price of only $25, making it one of the go-to brunch spots in all of British Columbia. Wilson, this is Jake. He's Hi, the uh, he's my husband, and also <laughs> he's also the cook in the family. Cook in the family, beautiful. Once upon a time. <laughs> you gonna show me some of the behind the scenes? Yeah, come take a look in the kitchen. All right, awesome. So I head back here. So obviously this is uh, this is pretty different to what we had 
uh, in the original blue shack, but uh, we're good here now. Um, I think we're going to show you our pool pork hash. Beautiful. And please tell me a little bit more about this kitchen. Basically, you know, we keep things local, uh, sustainable. We do everything from first principle. So what you're going to see here is our pool pork, which we smoke in-house, we rub in-house, our barbecue sauce is made in-house, like everything. We know what goes into everything because it's all done in here. Wow. Is that why it's so authentic and so good? I think so, yeah. I think so. Yeah. I was blown away by how great the food is here. Well, it's awesome and that's kind of part of the, the charm here. You come out to the middle of the bush and you don't really know what you're going to accept and then... Yeah, exactly. That's exactly how I felt. You away. Yeah, beautiful. And that's, yeah, slow cooked 16 hours overnight. That's what it'll get you. And the whole valley smells of it each night. <laughs> wow, so everyone just comes in like, yo, Jake. We, we know, the fresh... smoke is going. Yeah. Oh my God, so tender. Good, so huh? good. Yeah? And the that flavor? smoky flavor? That, that, that yeah. smoky flavor, wow. Yeah. So the specialty about this kitchen when you rebuilt it yeah. is the sustainability factor. Yeah, exactly. So like a massive piece uh, when it comes to a kitchen is the amount of air you have to turn over to keep all this like smoke and steam going in and out. And with that air, you have to heat and cool it. But we actually have no active heating in this building. So do you guys want to warm yes, them in? Cool. I'll show yes, you. Yes, okay. yes, please, show us. So the air comes into the kitchen through these huge ducts up here yes. and then gets sucked out of the hood. But normally you just pull the air from outside. But in order for us to achieve our cooling in the kitchen during the summer months, what we've done is something called earth tubes. We've got four 18 inch diameter tubes, which are 150 foot long. that go down through the bottom of the floor of the restaurant, underneath 10 feet down, all the way up. And this steel boulder that you see over there, yes. that's the intake valve. So, so that's where the air- That's all the air in. Yeah, that's where all the air's coming in. Through. And then when it's underground, it gets cooled down to about six degrees. Oh, wow. And then comes, it's kind of a poor man's geothermal. That is so cool. Yeah. And is there, is there a button that you press to suck all the air in? Or just well, there's just a fan coming like and sucking in and pulling it. So if you stand there, you can like hear it being sucked down. But yeah, it goes in during the summer at like 25 degrees and comes out about 11. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty neat. That is so cool. I love that. Now, all this sustainability and beautiful architecture certainly does come at a cost. And when the old Fergies burnt down, Jake and Jess invested nearly $2 million to build this new restaurant. But in hearing the passion that these two have for the nature around them, and when you see the large crowds waiting for a table every weekend, it's clear that it was money well spent. Fergie's Cafe is hands down one of the most unique restaurants in all of BC. And it's truly inspiring to hear the story behind such an amazing restaurant. Thanks for the tour. That was amazing. Oh, cheers, 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 cheers. 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 Thank you, thank you. So tell me about this drink. You said, I must try this. You have to, this is the more Caesar. And it, it is, it's a Caesar with a bit more. Yes. But it's actually the more Caesar is named after someone called Keegan Moore. He's a Squamish guy, he works for Squamish Fire Rescue and he was the firefighter who extinguished the last flames of the old restaurant. So we wanted oh, to honor his memory. Wow, cheers yeah. to more, <laughs> cheers to more. Wow, this is a really yeah. great story. Yeah. <laughs> Before we jump to like modern day, present day about this beauty, I know it didn't start off like that. You guys bought this blend and everything because you guys were wanting to start a rafting business, water rafting business. Yeah. yeah. That's where everything started. <laughs> yes. Please tell me. Well, it's, it's just funny to think that's how we, we began. We don't even do the rafting anymore. No, um, no more rafting. But, uh, yeah, so it's a five-acre property. Um, Which has been here forever as a kind of resort. Yes, and the name Fergie's is a really old name. I mean, this, 50s, this whole yeah. property is steeped in story and history and, and memories for people. Um, and so the Fergie's name came from the Ferguson family who owned the whole resort when it was a fishing resort. Right. Um, but the whole place was quite run down. And it's hilarious when you think now what we bought. We, we were quite naive back then, weren't we? Well, we were like, oh, what a great place to do rafting. It's right close to the river. How hard could it be to rent a cabin for the night? Yeah. Just clean it, give someone the keys, take some out. Yeah, we were, we were naive. But I think we wouldn't have been here if we'd been no. just clued up. It's definitely such a unique experience. Like, you guys didn't set out to create a restaurant experience. No. It was water rafting yeah. and then the resort business. Yeah. And it just morphed into Fergie's, the restaurant. Well, this is what suddenly we became so passionate about. And, and I guess what's lovely about the restaurant is so many people can come here and experience yes. it. It really feels like you're 
really away when you're here, which Squamish locals love because they just hop down the road. It's and, only 10 minutes and from it's town. In, and yeah. Once we saw people just loved being here, we just wanted to keep adding yeah, and making it cooler. Yeah, that became our focus and our and, passion, I guess, didn't it? Yeah, we're very unbusiness-like business. Uh, it feels like it, right? Yeah. Like, how many years ago did you did this kind of morph into, like, the restaurant industry? It was actually after the fire, wasn't it? Because, after the fire. Yeah, because, because when the restaurant burnt down, we, we got so much contact from so many people that, that we knew, but the people we didn't know. We All got, over the world. We got food dropped off on our doorstep. We, like, it, it was crazy. And I get, we hadn't maybe realized what a good thing, or how much some people loved it, really. Wasn't how, it? Actually, what happened with the fire? I actually don't know much about it. Well, and we don't know what caused it, but um, there's a little cabin that overlooks the cafe at the back, the logger's shack. And um, the, the chap staying in there saw flames out the back of the restaurant. He called 911. But I, we had a, how old was Teddy? Six months. So Teddy was six months. So I just, about three o'clock in the morning, I'd gone to him because he'd been crying, put him down, gone back to bed. And I was, I was lying in bed and I was looking out the window. And I was like, that's weird because the color wasn't right. And it, it didn't, light, it, it, it was like this weird, like orangey guy. And I hadn't, I didn't clock it. And I just lay there and I couldn't sleep. And I was just, it's just so weird. And then I heard the sirens. Oh, no. And, you know, we live on the Squamish Valley. There's a lot of property up there. And the sirens go past every now and then. But the sirens were like, go, go, go. And then they just stopped right outside. Wow. And I was like, on it. So I was out the door in 30 seconds. And then... And Jess was... Asleep. Asleep. <laughs> As usual. As usual, I'm a yeah. really good sleeper. Um, I woke up. I literally, I remember waking up because I could hear Jake running up the stairs in his boots, which is a weird sort of noise, but his face just appeared in front of me like this and he said, Fergie's is on fire, do you want to come say goodbye? And then he just left. So then I kind of, what yeah, it just happened? wasn't the most kind way to wake you up. No. Do you want to say goodbye? That's the first thing that you said. That was it, do you want to come say goodbye? Like, I think you just, as soon as you wow. saw it, you're like, yeah, there's yeah. no it was, saving By the time I, was, I got out there, it was, it was gone. And it was so eerie. It was just this weird sound like oh, like crackling and it, and by the time I was there the yeah the flames were like 20 feet above the building and it was just going how tough was it to rebuild the, actually before we even go there <laughs> please share with us some of the secrets how much did it take to rebuild just a rough estimate this place all in with all the equipment and furniture and everything 1.7 million yeah. 1.7 yeah. It's worth it. It's worth it. It's <laughs> worth it, guys. It's worth it. But tell me the, the, the process. The first thing was to, I guess, um, we had to understand there were a lot of restrictions. So we had to understand those first. Um, so yeah, we the had concrete, to up the in the being air. up in the air, that, was, that wasn't through choice. That was dictated to us. Oh. No, it's not very practical having your restaurant 10 feet up in the air. <laughs> it's quite hard work for our service team. Um, right. Getting deliveries in, making it accessible. You know, all these things become quite challenging. That's when why you the kitchen's have to upstairs. Be in the air. Oh, that was required. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, wow. um, so um, so because because flood water can come through, so it's, it's on still, so a flood can just wash on under it, um, and it will still be here, kind of like an arc. <laughs> but with beer. So with with a, a, a fridge full of beer and food, so you know, wow, yeah. yeah. And what really is like I was like the center of attention, aside from this building, is this tree. Yes. Please we love tell this me tree. about this tree. We so this is a black walnut tree. Um, and we, we love it so much. Um, it is quite old. Our children yeah. are really worried about it, aren't yeah. we? We've told them it's their problem. <laughs> it is, it's, it's elderly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we have a really wonderful um, friend who's an arborist who, who we work with with the tree and he keeps, he keeps an eye on it. But it just has these stunning, huge leaves. Yes. So it's a, it's a rain shelter, it's a shade in the summer, it's, um, but yeah, there's and a it's lot a of people. it's a pretty awesome canopy, like at night, when it's lit from underneath. It's a, I, that's why you guys room. have so much wedding yes. catering and venue in here. Yeah, we do a lot of weddings here. Well, just it's because it's, it's really, it feels really a, kind of, you're out in nature with yes. trees and beauty, but it's kind of comfortable and easy oh, very, here. So. It, you know what? This feels really wise to me. Like I'm like, oh, this is a wise old grandpa, yeah. just looking after us, kind of, kind of feeling to me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm like, wow, so wise. And if you look, I don't know if you know, when you come in the driveway, the way that the building is designed, where the tree is, and where where it comes, you actually almost can't see Fergie's. It's mm. hidden almost entirely behind the foliage of the yeah. tree, um, which which was part of the design and the way it's, it sort of creeps in. That was yes. all part of the the architecture. But the, was the, to... the crane operator couldn't believe when we were. He, he was like, so we're going to cut all these branches out. <laughs> no, whoa, nope. whoa, 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 whoa. 
you've got to drop so that steel beam at the top there had to be lowered between two branches. We, we like, were there guys, like when we designed the building. Like, this, this is ridiculous. This beam has to go here between that branch and that branch. That's this is one of the wow. main points of the building. It has to go there, and yeah, they, they couldn't believe it. I we haven't even it. told them about our Pythagoras. <laughs> Pythagoras. <laughs> what are you talking about? Is this you some can kind explain of this one. so uh, just another late night mission was working out we used some like old school well i don't know what would you call it like high school maths to work out <laughs> the height of the roof is calculated by we use google to work out the height of the mountain over there how far we are from it and then no we way. use like basic trigonometry to work out if we and we figured it if we yeah. raise the bar the roof height by six inches to ten and a half feet then the average person sitting at the bar can see the top of the mountain. It Whereas in the, the in the original plans, the roof was going to be at 10 feet. And it just it just kind of like, for me as a six foot guy, I was like, that oh, I'm not quite going to be able to see the top of the mountain. So there we were, yeah. Google Maps, working out the distance, the height. And we're like, <laughs> we hey, still got the drawings. Yeah, we found good. them the other day. They like proffered two uh, kids with a, <laughs> with a, with a. Whose idea was this? Was this Jess's <laughs> idea? Yeah, you know, uh, I can't even remember now. We were at school together, so I think I feel like a lot of these ideas maybe happen at the same time. We're not even sure who comes up with it first. We had no idea if it would be right. It was quite a relief, yeah. and we're like, oh, nailed it. So you didn't even get an architect to, to, hey, you know what, the architect recommended it to lift up another... No, you guys, you know what, let's figure it out, let's do it. Well, our architect is a perfectionist. He's amazing. Chris Hunter is very perfectionist, and there's lots of details that are him, but definitely we challenged him with a few things, didn't yeah, we? Sure. he? We surprised him a few times with the things that we cared about. Uh, Jake and Jess's yeah. yeah, yeah. So you guys are a destination location. It took me, what, two hours to get here? Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, like, how do you guys market this place? Well, that's always been the challenge, hasn't it? And yes. we are out of the way. And those first few, I was going to say weeks, but months, maybe even years, yes. it was it was pretty slow going. But the word slowly has got out. But we're, we're only 10 minutes from Squamish. But now the amount of people who drive up from Vancouver yeah, because it's such a beautiful drive. Yes. So actually, there's a thing to do. That's on a the Sunday. thing. Fergie's has become a thing to do. So a what should we do. do today? Let's go to Fergie's versus let's go to the beach or to the lake. It's it, you know, it's there's there's the effort of getting here, but then it's just being here and, and taking your time. And so now that word is out, people have learned that it, it is worth the effort. Were you ever scared that it's not going to work out? You're like, yo, yes. millions of dollars. <laughs> yeah. We were well, told never to do it. Yeah, when we when we bought the property, the the people at the custodians at the time were like, just so you know, loads of people have tried to get that restaurant off the ground. No one's ever going to come out here. And I guess it kind of sat with us for a little while, but then yeah. eventually we were, we um, thought we'd have a go. We don't take much credit for that. Like Squamish has changed a lot mm, as a town. Yeah. We have such a loyal local community and they really keep us, they've really kept us going all these years. Um, and now the secret's out a little bit more. Um, <laughs> They actually, but some, some we, of our Squamish locals stay away in the summer, don't they? Yeah, They're like, it's raining, yes, we can go back to Fergie's. Right, it's yes, going to be quieter. Yes. <laughs> so I guess the secret for you guys, what's the secret sauce? Well, what is it that made you guys so successful? I know this is a really cheesy buzzword, but I think it's authenticity. Mm. Like, we're, we're not very typical. <laughs> we're, we're kind of a bit quirky, um, a bit unexpected. Um, but there's there's a lot of story here. There's a lot of heart. It's just just us. We do things because we think it'll be nice, or people will love it. I think it truly lies in the passion, the passion you guys have with this place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It it truly is because it, if you're just looking at the business aspect, you just shared with me average order value twenty five bucks. It, it doesn't make sense. Like at the oh, end of the day, right? Like I, I know we've been. I mean, like we do $50. ten thousand dollar days. That's a yeah. lot of eggs and potatoes. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, like for you guys, like it truly is the passion that drives it, mm -hmm. and people feel it, mm -hmm. and that's really why. Like I'm like, wow, I, I have to come back. You know. But I think we, this restaurant is supported by the resort and the wedding business and all of that is about that same feeling people have here. They're like, I want to spend time here. I want to have my wedding here. And so it, the, the, dry, the, the wonderful feeling Fergus has created has actually helped the rest of the business and then that, that has helped Fergie's again. It's all very symbiotic. symbiotic. Yeah. Symbi wow, look at that. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. We met in biology class, so I guess it's kind of, it's, it's fitting. <laughs> Very fitting. Um, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. I, it's, it's a pleasure to learn so much about the stories, the history about Fergie's. 
sometimes it, like with restaurants, they don't have that deep of a root, that deep of a story that they can tell. But for you guys, you guys can tell stories for the whole day with your friends, family, and I think that's really the essence of this. It's so cool. It's so true. Cool. It's another story. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you once again. Thank Cheers. you. Cheers. 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 So there you go, guys. The secret sauce behind Fergie's success. Jake and Jess's philosophy is simple. If you're passionate about something, don't be afraid to go all in. Whether it be the detailed architecture, to the delicious food, to the nurture of the community. Thank you so much for watching this episode of The Secret Sauce. I'll see you guys next time.